Hello everyone, this is Suzanne and God Crochet and Chatter. Welcome back. Today is Monday, May 1st, and I'm sorry I wasn't on yesterday with the verse of the day. I went to record in YouTube, and it let me record, but there was no sound. I could listen to other YouTube channels just fine. So today, I ran over to a guy I know that fixes and repairs computers. He couldn't figure out what it was. So then I had to run all the way over to Best Buy. Of course, there was a lot of construction to get through. I finally got there and they couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting any sound when I did a recording. It wasn't, nobody was would be hearing my voice. So, my husband has the same issue. He got on YouTube, tried to record. It didn't record his voice. So I think it's a YouTube problem, and hopefully enough people will complain. Um, I see other people are making videos and doing just fine. I don't know what the answer is. But anyway, long story short, um, I'm using my camera to do the same thing. I don't know why I didn't think of that yesterday. I think I was so frustrated. I just gave up on it. But anyway, I'm back today, and today we are going to study Revelation 2, verse 10. We are doing a study, verse-by-verse verse study, in Revelation. And I, somebody said that I was extigate, extigating, I think that's how I pronounce it. Anyway, what it is, is a verse-by-verse verse study of the Bible. I said, oh, okay. I didn't know there was a name for it, but I guess there is. All right, let's get on with today's study in Revelation. Don't fear suffering for Jesus. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Andrew Brewston, an American missionary, planted the Izmir Resurrection Church in modern-day Samaria. In 2016, he was jailed by Turkish authorities on false charges, but released 735 days later, following pressure from U.S. diplomats. 735 days. Wow. That's over two years. In the 3rd and 4th century AD, scores of Christians were likewise jailed. Some were tortured to disfigurement. Some lost their property and others their lives. In 2050, Roman Emperor Decius took it a step further by enacting a law in which all people were required to make sacrifices to pagan Roman deities. A common, a command that went directly against God, several of God's Ten Commandments. It was like a cross between King Nebuchadnezzar's decree of the golden image, Daniel 3, and the Medo-Persian governor's legislation on prayer, Daniel 6. This officialized persecution was, however, merciful mercifully irregular as to the several successors after him each with varying interests took their turns upon the roman throne however in 303 the reigning emperors under the instigation of emperor diocletian put into place a calculated strategy aimed at completely eradicating the growing christian population one of the longest and most ruthless to face Christians thus far. This persecution lasted without reprieve for 10 years, or as today's verse prophesies, 10 prophetic days. Generally in the Bible, lengths of time within time prophecies are understood using a particular principle. As the Bible interprets itself, this principle is explained in both Numbers 14.34 and Ezekiel 4 6. In brief, one prophetic day equals one literal year, a day for each year. Thus, in today's verse, ten 
Prophetic days equals 10 literal years. Indeed, from 303 until 313, Christians suffered terrible tribulation at the hands of Romans of the Roman state, tunicated only by the Edict of Milan. Yet these early believers heeded the Savior's promise to stand firm. Their faith endured even in the face of cruel death and helped to multiply this small group of believers in the world's largest religion. They were very severely persecuted, but they withstood it. They remained true to God, and that's very important. It is the one church that no evil can be spoke out against of the seven churches. Now, I found something online. Excuse me, let me take a drink. My throat's a little sore today. Okay, on um, BibleAsk.org, they have a wonderful, um, it's a wonderful site where people ask questions and they answer them and they have different studies. And this is what I found concerning the 10 days, which I found to be in, in, just interesting. The 10 days. The Apostle John wrote, Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Explanation. <clears throat> On the basis of the year-day principle reckoning, prophetic time periods according to Ezekiel 4, 6 and Numbers 14, 34. The 10 days has been interpreted as a period of 10 literal years and applied to the period of the most severe imperial persecution, 303 to 313, began by Diolition and continued by his associate and successor, Glarius. This was an attempt to wipe out Christianity by burning the scriptures, destroying church buildings, and imprisoning the leaders. These rulers believed that the church had grown to such dimensions of strength and popularity in the empire that at last Christianity should be promptly stamped out, the traditional Roman way of life would cease to exist, and the empire itself would disintegrate. Consequently, they formed a policy designated to exterminate the church. Wow. Can you imagine being a Christian at that time? The Roman Degree Against Christians. Delicians' first decree against Christians was issued in the year 303, banning the practice of Christianity throughout the empire. Persecution began in the army and spread throughout the empire. The Roman authorities concentrated their terrors on the Christian clergy in the belief that if the shepherds were removed, the flock would scatter. The horrors of this persecution are vividly described by the church historian Theodore Ecclesiastical History, who describes the gathering of the bishops of the church to the Council of Nicaea some years after the end of the persecution, A.D. 325. Some came without eyes, others with their bodies horribly maimed in different ways, Many, of course, did not survive this time of trouble. Constantine's Edict to End the Persecution In February 313, ten years after the beginning of these persecutions, Western Roman Emperor Constantine and the Emperor Linus, who ruled the Balkans, met in Milan and agreed to change the policy toward Christians. They released the Edict of Milan, which gave Christians legal status and a relief from persecutions. The Edict granted Christians toleration in the Roman Empire and liberty to practice their religion. The document is found in La Tentius um, Persuatorium and in Caesar's History of the Church. Now, I thought this was important. We can now fully understand how they were persecuted, this church in Samaria, but they kept true to God. 
through all this heavy, horrible persecution that lasted 10 years. And God bless them. God bless them. Yet these early believers heeded the Savior's promise to stand firm. Their faith endured even in the face of cruel death and helped to multiply the small group of believers into the world's largest religion. Father God, may we persevere in the faith even unto death, knowing that you will undoubtedly reserve for us the crown of eternal life. All right, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed the study of verse 10 today in Revelation. We will be back on Wednesday with Revelation 2, verse 11. All right, everybody, you take care. You have a blessed day, and I will see you back on Wednesday with another study in Revelation. Bye for now.